We're live. And we're back. We're back. We're not going to delete the other one because fuck it. It took too long to get that one going. So we decided, since we got our supper, our Friday night supper feast, we're going to do a mukbang along with what we talk about, which I think is going to be awesome. We got peaches shock and the peaches just right there. But these are breadsticks with cheese and bacon. Yeah, I reckon we got them before. Yeah, we did. And this is the garlic, the garlic tip? I think so. Unless it's the... I think so. No, it might... No, it's the jalapeno cheddar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, you were saying, though, that you saw, or you watched the Eric Young interview with Chris Van Vliet, and I said that I haven't seen it yet, but one thing, just going off of the title, is like, talk about his time in WWE, talk about sanity, he's going to talk about why he decided to <laughs> Look about 20 years younger, shaving his head, shaving off the beard. I'm sure why he decided to go back to Impact and all this other stuff. Well, then I won't ruin it for you, but mm. it's basically, you know, it ends what we've all been thinking. And of course, I made a video monitor about it. The mm -hmm. so WWE had really nothing for him. I did a lot of matches on main event, which I didn't watch. I don't watch main event for some reason. So, it really came down to him just leaving, going back to Impact. And a lot of, and a lot of wrestlers have either gone back to Impact or made their debut on Impact or AEW. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh-huh. I mean... I'm glad the Good Brothers actually get a second run on Impact. I think what they did in WWE was great. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's an understatement. But look, they were both Raw and SmackDown WWE champions. Also, the Revival. Uh -huh. And the Revi Revival were Raw or uh, NXT take team champions. Yes. Well, it really pisses me off, and I mean, it, it. it's a given, and everyone says it. Triple H is always good with the NXT roster, and then as soon as McMahon snaps them up for our SmackDown, it just takes a diarrhea dump all over their character. Right. And, you know, there has, there has been a lot of guys... And I've gone from NXT to Raw SmackDown and maintain their character, if you want to call that. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Shishka Nakamura, Asuka, um, Kyrie Sane, if you will. Although, when she was with the uh, Asuka and the Kabuki Warriors, they changed up her look. To kind of compliment Oscar. But other than that, she still had, well, she essentially went from being the pirate princess yep. to uh, a completely different version of herself. She was still basically herself, more or less. Yeah. And then, yeah, there has been some people that have gone from NXT to the main roster and had a change and have either done really, really well or have been treated like absolute shit. The problem I find with the Good Brothers and WWE was... They came out strong. We all knew who they were. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Luke Gallows, and we said this last week. I don't know if it was on here, but we said this last week. Luke Gallows was 
on WWE twice. Once as Festus, and once with CM Punk and Serena Ryder, which I don't know where the fuck she is. I think Serena now does behind the scenes stuff WWE. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think she's a uh, coach, one of the coaches at the Performance Center. Mm -hmm. Um, these are good. Probably. And the, the sauce is really good. It's not too spicy, but it kind of has that. It's really, really weak. But it has that tang of like a sour cream. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. Dallas and Anderson. Well known, you know, they met in Japan, became partners, ran through Japan, became heavyweight tag IWGP heavyweight tag team champions. I don't know, five times I want to say maybe roughly. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they both went to WWE. Gallows was in WWE for like his fourth go around. Anderson was just new to the WWE, and you know they did pretty well. Like the stuff they did with AJ was pretty good. Mm -hmm. On their own was not bad, but like there was the a few things where it was like, okay, this is enter it. Like it was entertaining, but also like. It, this it's not these guys. No. But you know. And I mean that's the problem nowadays. Like I gotta give Vince credit. AJ Styles is AJ Styles. Oh yeah. In WWE. With that. Well, there was that really silly promo he cut two weeks ago. Yeah. But He's still AJ Styles. Huh. You know, Samoa Joe. Mm -hmm. Samoa Joe. Yep. Um, yeah, Samoa Joe's another one that never really changed from his time in NXT to WWE. Mm -hmm. So, get into AE or Dynamite this past week. Which I unfortunately missed, boo. Then allow me to fill you in. Woo woo woo. Okay. This week on Dynamite was a fairly good show. Yep. There was of course there was a few debuts that were quite interesting. So start off the show with Cody defending the TNT title against a guy or a guy by the name of Warhorse. Don't know anything about him. Don't know where he wrestled previously. It's it's just a new guy on the roster. Mm -hmm. Fine, whatever. So match goes on. Great good match. Cody gave Warhorse a spotlight, if you will. Like give a good accounting of himself. Cody came back with some offense. Good back and forth match. Cody ended up with the win. Mm -hmm. As Cody went to shake Warhorse's hand, as traditional that Cody does after a match, hard fought battle, etc., etc., here comes two guys, masked guys from. Dark Order. Warhorse pushes Cody out of the way, starts attacking these two guys. They beat him down. He rolls out. I go after Cody. They're beating up Cody. Alan Anderson gets in the row, takes off his watch, and he's looking like he can. He's looking like he's going to kick these two guys' ass. Yeah. Kind of like 
Yeah. Even though Iron had to retire because of a fuck up with the surgery, yeah. and his hand doesn't work properly, I'm sure he could still go. I was out of grass. Just as it looks like Iron's going to get in it, into it with these two guys, here comes this guy, and it's like, that guy looks familiar. And they go, oh, that's Matt Cardoni. Cardona? Matt Cardoni. Cardoni, whatever. Yeah. Now, a lot of you may not know that name, but if I say it was former WWE superstar Zack Ryder, that name, that name you will for sure recognize. So now he is a member of the AEW roster. The thing that really gets me is that and a lot of these guys were let go in WWE. You know, you saw it. Like you fucking saw... Uh, I'm going to say Rockstar Spud because I can't remember. Drake Maverick. Mm -hmm. You saw his crying whatever, but mm -hmm. of course he's back on NXT. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. They let go a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. EC3 is going back to Impact. Now, obviously I'm still not a fan, but whatever. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Eric, uh, Eric Young... Back on Impact. My good brothers are on Impact now. You have Matt Cardoni, who is now on Impact. Oh, sorry, AEW. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what interests me. Because Matt is going out with Chelsea Green. Yes. So... Chelsea had got fired from the Robert Stone brand. Now, you take with that what you will. I don't know if she's going to jump ship Yeah. to AEW to join her boyfriend. Maybe. Who knows? So that's a possibility. Now, you can consider Bobby Roode, who's out of action for I don't know how long it is now. Mm. Do you think that because Eric Young is in Impact again, that Bobby will come back to Impact? Mm. It will either be. By the way, shout out to Chris Van Fleet. It will either be Bobby goes back to Impact or he. When this little virus thing settles down, he may just stick with Tommy because honestly, Bobby and WWE has been absolutely fantastic. Mm. You can't really say a bad word about anything but they've done with Bobby in WWE. No. I mean, the glorious gimmick is friggin' impressive and amazing. You know? He was an NXT champion, uh, tag team champion already. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a feeling Bobby will eventually end, end up on WWE television again. When? Don't know. Now, a little later in the night, they're going to have... Draws mm -hmm. to see who's going to be partnered for this women's tag mm -hmm. team cup, or whatever, whatever you want to call yeah. it. So they have Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero, and they're talking about uh, who do you want as your tag partner? She's like, I don't care. I'm going to win this thing. So she reaches her hand in this tumbler, or whatever you want to call it. Pulls out a thing that's got the color purple on it. It's like, okay, interesting. And, um, what's her name? Dasha goes, oh, somebody else pulled that color. She's like, who? 
and comes walking in this girl, and it's like, okay, who the hell is that? Because you could only see her profile and long dark hair. Oh, okay. So, it's like, who the hell is that? Then when I saw her face, I went, holy fuck, I haven't seen her in, it's got to be, I want to say at least 10 years or so. They're calling her, her name is Adrian or something. I can't remember, I can't yeah. remember exactly. Fucking Cameron. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit. I mean, after she left WWE, it was, she kept a low profile, so. Yeah, she kept a fairly low profile. And I know that the first two seasons of Total Divas was complete bullshit. It, it was. I don't give a shit. I think that whole song, show, I'm not even going to. Anyways, yeah, so. Yeah, to see Cameron back and in AEW, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. I mean, again, it's very nice to see a new face in the company, mm -hmm. but also a familiar face. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, now, just looking at a video earlier before Kyle came down, AW has, well, they're still in the talks, actually, about going three hours. Huh? Just like Raw, I guess. So, two things. You know, it's a good thing because you want to take the people from Dark and you want to feature them more on Dynamite. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. The bad thing is, if you want to extend your show for three hours, do you not understand how fucked up that is? Because, obviously, you're not paying attention to your pro the other product that is going low on the ratings. But at the same time, SmackDown's going low on the ratings. Yeah. Unfortunately, but... Yeah. Uh, when you hear shit like "ding dong," mm. you know, whatever. But could it work? Maybe. I mean, I didn't really like seeing Raw for two hours, but or three hours, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. I guess I don't really know, but true. For that to happen, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. If a if AEW decides to put Dynamite three hours, can they pull it off? Yes. Will they be able to pull it off? Absolutely. And can they pull it off? Yes. Will they be able to pull it off? Yes. And I feel too that they probably will be able to pull it off better. Then raw, but yeah, well, well, okay, I can, I can see that. I guess. I mean, <coughs> yes, it's a newer company, but I think they can do it too, and it's much better. Like, not saying that raw hasn't been able to maintain itself for three hours because they have, mm -hmm. but the biggest thing is with raw is. They generally will fill <coughs> fill their three hours with yeah some really good matches, but also a lot of talking. Yeah. With Dynamite as it is with two hours, okay, mm -hmm. in a two-hour period of Dynamite, you might see one, two interviews at the most. And maybe something to do with Britt Baker, whatever. Mm. And then along the lines at some point. Yeah. For the most part, you know, one to two interviews in a two hour segment of Dynamite. Go to three hours. Yeah, they might end of your segment, 
in there at some point, or some, or a video package, a video, whatever you want to call it. The rest of the time, they could easily fill with matches. You know? No, I can I can understand. I like my Baker as well. Yeah, she's quite a good heel. Don't be an asshole, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that you know that's good. So, speaking of Britt Baker, let's talk about a boyfriend who's been in controversy because apparently it's a, a work, and I think it's a work. It does look like a shoot, but it's actually, I can't see Adam Cole doing that. Yeah, no. Him and Pat McAfee. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Cole appeared on Pat McAfee's podcast. And they were talking about Adam's career. I'm sure him being NFC champion, probably him in Ring of Honor, uh, Undisputed Era, so on and so forth. Somewhere along the lines, Pat McAfee remarked Adam Cole's size and how small he is. Well, apparently Adam Cole didn't take too kindly to that and lost his shit. Right. Now... What the comments were, I don't know. There's been video packages of it on online. Yeah. I haven't watched it because I don't personally give a shit. Yeah. The fact of the matter of it is this. Why the hell would Adam Cole go off on being an undersized wrestler? And even if it had anything to do with him being undersized and the NXT champion... When mm -hmm. there have been many mm -hmm. undersized wrestlers be a top champion, if you will. Rey Mysterio, mm -hmm. Eddie Guerrero, Kofi Kingston, Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit. Bret Hart. Yeah. Although Bret Hart's a little bit taller, but not by much. Yeah. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, definitely for sure. Yeah. Dean uh, Malenko. No, actually, Dean Malenko was never world champion. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, <laughs> yeah. And there's a whole pro there's probably a whole list yeah. of other wrestlers that were world champion that were undersized. Yeah. Or the smaller guy, if you will. Mm -hmm. And you say that this is this is a shoot. Or probably is shoot whatever. No, I, I just said it, it could be a work. A lot of people are saying it's a shoot. I mean, I could see Adam Cole having, possibly having reason to be pissed off about the comments being made by, or you know, whatever Pat said. Yeah. Is it a work? Possibly. A work to what, though? Well, build, build up Adam Cole's credentials even more as a heel? We are. We all already know how damn good of a heel Adam Cole is. Oh, yeah. Like, he doesn't need any build up of any kind. Well, no. I think what they're trying to do is, and that was what I heard, they're trying to make a story <coughs> out of Adam Cole and Pat McAfee. Because Matt, Pat McAfee is also associated with the pre-shows on WWE, uh, their pay-per-views, and I think that's what they're trying to do. Well, that's what I heard. Is it going to work? I, don't, I doubt it, because Pat's not a wrestler. No. He's a sports commentator. Yeah. So, is it a good idea? Well, yeah, sure. Why not? And... I saw something on Facebook that I guess Triple H took to Twitter and kind of defended Adam Cole. And I don't know what the tweet was, what he said in the tweet, but there was a comment in there where he said that uh, Pat McAfee is a button pusher. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, for the COO of a big ass billion dollar corporation. What the fuck you doing using 
fourth grader insults. Oh, he's just a button pusher. Really? That's the best you got? A lot of uh, wrestlers nowadays in WWE are fourth grader insult legend or experts, I guess. Well, at least the writers are, but whatever. Yeah, no, I get it. I think that it's bullshit that he would say that. I mean, he knows better, but whatever. I don't know what demographic you're trying to go for, but it's kind of like, I think, I mean, Adam Cole's too good for that. Yeah. Here's a guy who, okay, if he's just playing along, that's great, but this guy is a triple crown in Ring of Honor, a triple crown in NXT. Yes. You really want to uh, make him a part of something that's kind of silly? I don't know. Yeah, like, if it is a work, a work towards what, and, okay, Triple H coming to Adam Cole's defense, okay, that's fine, whatever, you know. He's the COO of WWE. He's solely behind Adam Cole. He's probably the reason why... Adam Cole and Undisputed Era are in NXT right now. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, come on. You, you a button pusher? Mm -hmm. Come on, Honor. You're the cerebral assassin. You're the king of kings. You're the game. And that's that's the best you can come up with. over 50 now, so it's gotten soft. I think, anyways. <laughs> I, still, I still love that rant, though. Well, what? What do you expect him to say? Suck my dick? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can you tell Jerry Blaze to catch your ass? What do you expect him to come back with? Suck my dick? Yeah. Anyway. Other news, there's apparently, and they're doing this now, and it's not just wrestling, it's fucking all over the place. Because of this new era, this new age of getting a boo boo feeling certain, and you know. Finding out years later and then banning, well, they're not banning Kevin Owens, but there was a video of Kevin Owens, I don't know what year it was, and he says the N-word a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, <clears throat> it was not necessary, it's wrong. I don't think they're going to fire that, um, Kevin Owens for that. No. But just to bring that up, all these years later. I know, like, come on, Really? I mean, Excalibur has done the same thing recent. I think it's recently. So yeah, there's probably I would take issue with that, but that's, yeah, that's probably why I, Excalibur wasn't on the commentary team for Dynamite this week. Yeah. So yeah. unfortunately, I'll oh, go ahead. It's sorry. Jerry Lawler, Tony Savani, and Taz. But yeah. Jerry Lawler or not Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross. Oh, Jim I mean. Ross. Just that fuck. That's interesting. Yeah. I recently uploaded and fixed, I guess, if you want to put it that way. I guess censored our latest, or the last video we did before I went into surgery. Right, yes, yes. For uh, Great America, no, Bash at the Beach. Bash at the Beach 96. I'm not sure if I should have done it, but I did it anyways. Yeah. I thought it was kind of funny in a way. Yeah, yeah. Laugh at my pain. <laughs> it's still, it's still weird to me, and it's not as scary as some of the other shit I saw uh, from myself. Yeah. But it's like I was there, present, doing the video. You saw it. Yeah. And then I just typed in a bunch of shit, like Steiner broth and the outsides. Yeah. Um, Rick Glare? Yeah. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. Usually, if you make a mistake, you're quick to catch it and correct it as you're putting in the people that are participating in the match tag match, singles match, so on and so forth. But on that occasion, you must have been, I don't know, you must have been either. So far out of it, yeah, I or think so. whatever that <laughs> you <sighs> typed it in, and then just the the funniest one is, <clears throat> yeah, you had like 
Okay, the Stein Bros and uh, Rick Blair and Keith Morris. Keith Morris, like the simple little mistakes. Yeah. But then there was one match. I can't remember who was that, but it, it, like I'll say, uh, Disco Inferno against <clears throat> Dean Malenko as an example. I don't think it was that match. But it was like it was uh, Public Enemy. I think it was like. Public Enemy against just a bunch of letters. No, no, that was supposed to be Public Enemy. Oh. Yeah. So when I uploaded it and we edited it, I put it. But the only reason I did that was because we did the reboot, like when it came back. Yeah. And I thought I had put it under the Wheels of Fury name. Yeah. Apparently I didn't. I, I had the old one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I quickly deleted because I don't want no one to see that no more. Yeah. Although I miss my hair. Yeah. Like, look, fucking Brutus the Barber beefcake over here. Yeah. But yeah, if you have a shunt, take care of it. Oh, absolutely. Yes, for sure, for sure. So, anyways, yeah, I think that's it. I hope SmackDown tapes tonight because last week, fucking baseball. And it ended up they moved SmackDown, so that looked like a good show. But yeah. Anyways, see that's the one thing that I like. like you could say when I'm day when I'm hanging out down here with Matt, we do the odd YouTube live. Definitely do Facebook live, and then do a video for our channel. You know, I'm down here past eight, well, past the time of SmackDown's on. Yeah. So I will watch it on Saturday at <clears throat> uh, Saturday afternoons after NXT. Well, I also am not, I don't see NXT because I'm watching Dynamite. Mm -hmm. So I will watch NXT and then right afterwards watch SmackDown. So. If there happens to be that occasion where, you know, they push SmackDown back because they're showing a baseball game, don't necessarily have to worry about that. I know. It just pissed me off that day. Like, okay. For, like, if I was to watch it and it's like, okay, there's a baseball game on, I'll wait till it's over and then watch SmackDown. Or if I am interested in who's playing the game, I'll watch the game and then watch SmackDown afterwards. Mm -hmm. Depending. Mm -hmm. But for Matt's case, he will generally DVR and then watch it later, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. But if you're expecting it to be SmackDown, mm -hmm. and then you it's like, oh, I watched SmackDown from last week. You, this title comes up, you click on, wait, this is baseball, what the? Fuck. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And it wasn't even a good team. Anyways. Yeah. So one last it's a question that I meant to ask you. So because you have the Buffalo Boys, Butcher and the Blade, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. They're on a W. If they were to add another member, how would you feel if let's say Kevin Blackwood because he hasn't done shit since Smash yeah I mean they could for sure do that but it's like okay you got the butcher or the blade <laughs> what, what name would you give Kevin Blackwood blacksmith I don't know Yeah, <laughs> the butcher and the blade and the blacksmith the butcher and the blade and the black man uh, people might take offense to that one. Yeah. But, like, yeah. but the butcher, the, yeah, the butcher, the blade, and the blacksmith. The butcher, the blade, and the. Bay, uh, the. Buffalo. Buffalo boy. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure I'll see Dynamite next week. But, anyways. Wait, one other thing that I thought yeah. of. Oh, you. We've talked extensively about various superstars in WWE that have 
been on other wrestling show, uh, wrestling uh, other promotions. Yeah. Whether it be Ring of Honor, whether it be Impact, whether it be Japan, whether it be Mexico, so on and so forth. There are a lot of different wrestlers in AEW that have, are from a wide variety of uh, other wrestling promotions. You got Jericho, Moxley, Hagar, Matt Car uh, Cardona, uh, 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 the Bible. Well, yeah. The Gallows and Anderson, yeah. or, or no, they're an impact, but uh, the mm -hmm. FTR, uh, so on and so forth from WWE. Yeah. You got Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, The, uh, the Butcher and the Blade, Ali. Uh, who else can I think of? Randy. No, not Randy. Uh, Uno. Oh, yeah, you can kind of say Brandy and Cody. <coughs> Cody's another one, WWE. You can even say Brandy and Cody. Stu Grayson, Evil Uno. Like, uh, from Smash. Yeah. Uh, and then you got all these other... Matt Brand Hardy, don't forget him. Yes, Matt Hardy as well. And then you got a whole slew of guys and girls that just came from like an independent promotion. Sonny Kiss, Joey Janela, Kip Sabian, Penelope Ford, um, Jurassic Express, and, uh, Brody Lee, <clears throat> another one from WWE. Uh, when Cole Cabana was in Ring of Honor. And he, and he got like, oh, uh, um, Arnett, or, uh, oh yeah, Arnett Anderson, and Tully Bass had wrestled in WWE. Yep. Brandon Jake Buster, Roberts. Jake Roberts. Um, <clears throat> Lance Archer? No, Lance, Lance never wrestled in WWE. No, okay. No. He wrestled in Japan. Japan, uh, uh, TNA. Yes. Just yeah. a whole wide variety of wrestlers that have come from different promotions and all over the place, which is actually pretty cool. Uh-huh. This like talk, we talk quite a lot about different wrestlers that are in WWE that it came from like Ring of Honor or Impact. Yeah. And then you guys, but look at AEW. There's a lot of guys that are there now that came from WWE. Some guys came from Smash. Yeah. And then. Uh, a lot of them, I'm sure, came from independence. Yeah. Well, even Japan, you know, yeah. you got Kenny Omega, you got the Young Bucks, you got uh, uh, her, uh, her, uh, Shida, the Shida. women's champion. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michael Nakazawa. Yeah. Uh, just a whole bunch of others. And then you even look at, like, the commentary team, too, okay? Mm -hmm. Throughout the large part of the 90s and the Monday Night Wars, you got Tony Schiavone commentating for Nitro, and you got JR commentating for Monday Night Raw. And a war of words, and who's the better brand, and yeah. who's the better company, so on and so forth. I guarantee you never in a million years did those guys or anybody that's a wrestling fan in general, would ever have thought they would ever see those two together yeah. on a commentary team. Mm. But, I mean, at the same time, they're two of the best to ever do it. Yeah, but see, also, Shivani and Ross were in WCW in the late 80s. Well, true. And then Shivani jumped ship to WWF for a while. Well, yeah. Before going back to WCW, but I get it. Yeah. You know, I think that's cool as well. And I think that there's a lot of cool things that are happening. And like I just thought of today is that 
AEW is like WCW done the right way. If you yeah, you could say that because I don't know how much money they're getting paid. I know WCW was the shits for not giving them. Uh, they gave them the right amount, but they didn't do nothing with them. Yeah, and it's like okay, well, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure Roddy Piper and Bret Hart, well, Roddy Piper would have kicked himself in the ass. Yeah. You know, Bret Hart kicks himself in the ass. Yeah. You know, uh, but that's the way it was back then. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that, you know, for a period of time there, WCW was <laughs> in quite a deep hole financially. Well, yeah, that's true. That's something that I will say about the Eric Young interview. I know I'm not going to spoil a lot. I just want to say this because you did mention it, and I do agree. That at the time Eric Young left Impact, the WCW or Impact was like the shits. Yeah. There is no real website. Even Jeremy, my brother, who works for Smash, he even said the same thing. There's no website for Impact. Their product was off and on. Yeah. Because in 2010, you had Flair, well, it was maybe 2009, Flair, Hardy, Hogan, Bischoff. Uh, uh, uh. There was basically WCW Light afterwards. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that. And that's kind of unfortunate, but I think with a lot of returns and, you know, a lot of debuts, Impact is going to be even better than it was because you could say of that. that. Yeah. I mean, I was really good back in 2016. Yeah. So, I mean, when it was, when Impact was first in its inception, mm -hmm. there Website was, I believe, it was nwatnawrestling.com. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Now, now I think the only website that they have is tnashop.com. Yeah. They don't have like it's not a full website where you can you know look at highlights of the show and previous stuff and. Also look at their merchandise and whatever. It's just they only have a hub for their merchandise. That's it. Yeah. Whereas, okay, go WWE, WWE dot com. They've got results. They've got their merchandise. You can look up people that are in the Hall of Fame. Right. You can. Look, and there's so much stuff. On their website that you can look at. Yeah. Uh, why TNA doesn't have, like, I mean, I'm sure when it was NWA TNA, and it was, you know, NWA TNA.com, this is a long ass fucking title. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I'm sure it was probably pretty good. I still find it hard to believe that Christian Cage was in WA champion. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, anyways, this has been another live chat. Finally fucking figured out how to do it again. So, next week... So, SummerSlam's in two weeks. Yeah, Summer, SummerSlam is August the 18th. So... Because today is the beginning of August. Or, no, tomorrow. No, tomorrow will be the beginning of yeah, August. Yeah, so... Two weeks? I think so, yeah. All right. So then we'll be doing a look back at a SummerSlam of whatever has the most votes on my face, our Facebook page, sorry. Because right now, as it stands, it seems like SummerSlam 91. So What we could do is, I don't know if they're going to get more votes on sure. that poll. There's only like four right now. Right. What we could do is the SummerSlam that gets that's that let's say get has 
the second most votes. Mm -hmm. We do that as like an honorable mention, and then yeah. the week before Summer the SummerSlam, right? Do SummerSlam ninety one. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, we could do that. Because, I mean, I have no issue with doing SummerSlam 91. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting one in itself, but... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, it says me and Matt and Killer Kyle, and yeah. And if possible, we're, well, we will see you next week, I believe. Right. With the SummerSlam. Uh-huh. And so, deuces. Bye, guys. Oh.